Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. No one knows the exact cause of type 1 diabetes, but it occurs when the immu immune system mistakenly attacks the beta cells or insulin producing cells in the pancreas. Without insulin, we simply cannot live. Therefore, people who are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes require an external source of insulin in order to survive. At the young age of eight, I received the big news that I have type 1 diabetes. And I was relieved. Starting with the notion that I began with. To clarify, let's go back to the day of my diagnosis. As I was sitting in the deserted area, waiting area of the hospital, I looked up and saw my parents as they heavily approached leaving the doctor's office. I was immediately discomforted as I watched the silent cheers run down my mother's cheeks. I anxiously began to draw conclusions while hearing my father comfort my mom by saying that there is nothing that they could have done and nothing that they can do to change it. I was only able to come up with one conclusion as a result of the distress I was in because of my high glucose levels. Worst case scenario, I thought I was dying. Now you understand why type 1 diabetes came as a relief. And here is where my journey with type 1 diabetes began. It all started off with my mother managing my type 1 diabetes. And let me tell you, she did an immaculate job. But as I began to grow, the responsibility slowly began to shift down to me. And I got terrified. I was afraid of type 1 diabetes related complications. As a result of unwell managed diabetes, and high glucose levels. Therefore, I put in, in an immense effort in order to control my levels. And of course, that led to a diabetes burnout. I began to do the thoughtless act of overinjecting to ensure that my glucose level doesn't spike. This led me to enter the hospital in more than one occasion. As a result of my accumulating lows, I was afraid of being alone. And I no longer left the house without the company of someone who was fully aware of my medical condition. These fears began to limit me. I began to draw these imaginary boundaries that stopped me from achieving my goals. As a result of my fear of being alone, I passed on the opportunity of traveling abroad and studying. I used diabetes as an excuse and said, I have diabetes, I can't live alone. What if I go low? What if no one was around? What if? As I was talking with a friend, she asked why I did not go after that dream. And I responded, diabetes. I did not expect the response she gave back. And that response changed the way I live now. She said, I bet you're not the only one living with that condition. Why don't you talk with people who are going through the same condition and find out how they're dealing with similar issues? And she was 100% right, except I did not know anyone living with type 1 diabetes. So I ran back home and began to do my research. I was looking for a type 1 diabetes community or a network to connect with people who are living with the same condition. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any. 
and through my research, I passed by an ad posted by the Kuwait Diabetes Society as they were looking for a candidate to join an international type 1 diabetes program. I grabbed that opportunity and ran towards it. I was excited to meet people who are living with the same condition. I was excited to be a part of a type 1 diabetes network. But most importantly, I was excited to learn about how these people are coping with their issues. When I got there, I realized that we all had more than just type 1 diabetes in common. We were all also afraid of something that was type 1 diabetes related. While I was afraid of high glucose levels, someone else was afraid of lows. While sitting down and talking, sharing experiences, ideas, and thoughts, I found that as soon as her glucose levels reach five, she would automatically begin to munch down on high glucose snacks. And let me clarify, five is an average glucose level, which meant that she did not require to eat all that glucose. We both left this conversation with something that we gained. I was no longer afraid of highs, and she learned to accept normal glucose levels. We are all afraid of something, and fear is natural. But once that fear begins to intervene with our lives and affect our life choices, that's when we know that we need to take action. So I came back home with two goals. One, I wanted to build a type 1 diabetes community for people to share, learn, and support each other through this journey. So I began working with the Kuwait Diabetes Society to start the very first type 1 diabetes support group in Kuwait. And that's called Sualifna Sukkar. My second goal was to get over my fear of being alone with diabetes. So I applied for an internship abroad, booked my ticket, and left. And as an engineer, I began to error proof. I made sure that I always had glucose accessible. I made sure that I checked my glucose levels before going to bed. And I made sure that someone called and checked on me every day to make sure that I was up. To cut a long story short, it wasn't nearly as difficult as I made it seem to be. So after realizing these fears and beginning to acknowledge them, that's when we realize that diabetes is no longer managing our lives and that we are managing our diabetes. Thank you.